Good morning, you guys. Hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody enjoyed a, a great holiday weekend. Man, the weather was beautiful. I don't know about you guys. I got out. I went to the beach. I uh, we did a little yard work. It was just great to get outside. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. It is um, it is officially the end of summer. I guess we are into Tuesday after Labor Day. So uh, schools are starting back up today. So uh, I hope everybody's excited about the beginning of a new week and, a, and kind of a new school year and all those things. And uh, we will definitely pray for students um, this morning. But uh, I just want to welcome you guys. We are continuing we, uh, with our study of Christian character today. We're going to get back into that. And uh, somebody's throwing up hearts. I don't know who it is. I, don't know. I can't see who you are, the person that's doing that, um, which means that you are, you are incognito right now. Uh, just a reminder, if you want to be able to be seen by me on this, you have to um, either follow our page or follow my page. Otherwise, you are um, hidden. Uh, hey, Margaret, is that you then? So uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, we're going to get into the study of Christian character. We're going to continue with that study, and I'm going to share a little story of something that happened with me yesterday. So let's pray together before we start. Holy God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for a new opportunity to be present with one another, a new opportunity to be in your word this morning. So we just ask that you would pour your spirit out on us, unite us, draw us together, help us to, um, to be knitted together by heart and, and mind, even though we can't be together physically, Lord. And we ask that you would speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so you guys... Uh, Thanks for introducing yourself, Margaret. It's, it's, is it Mar I, I'm assuming you go by Margaret Ann. It's good to have you here, and uh, thanks for being a part of this. Um, I know some other people will jump on as we get moving forward here. Um, we have been studying about Christian character. We, we, um, I'm going to do Tuesdays and Thursdays, Thursdays kind of keep on this theme, and then on Sunday I'm going to give a little bit of the sermon, which is what uh, that now that we are opening for worship um, regularly, so, so we can stay connected online. Those that can't be at church can stay connected to what's going on in church. So today we're going to get back to our study of Christian character, which is who you are when no one's looking. And we've talked about trying to be, um, trying to reflect the image of Christ out in the world around us. And that that's not something that you can just pretend at or fake. Uh, it, it's really a matter of being something transformed from the inside out. And it's a matter of your character and your character really shows when no one's looking. So that's what we're talking about is who you are when no one's looking. Um, hey, Jeannie, good to see you this morning. So we're going to continue with that. And if uh, those of you that were here on Friday, we talked a little bit about, um, well, we've already talked about Christian character being about, you know, it starts with courage, having the courage to recognize that you need, um, that you're not perfect and that you need Jesus, having the courage to follow Jesus, even though uh, sometimes that doesn't, you don't know the next step, you just have to follow um, in faith, and that takes courage. We talked about how um, uh, it requires self-discipline and self-control, and that you have to kind of put yourself to the side sometimes and, and trust God that, that his plans are sometimes better than your own selfishness. And then uh, this next part that we've been talking about, and we started on Thursday talking about Christian vision and having... Um, Dance when no one else is watching. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Experience. If you can't be enjoy, joyful and dance and enjoy life when you're all alone, then how in the world can you be a source of joy for other people out in the world? So those are good words, Margaret Ann. I appreciate that. Um, we talked on on Thursday about having vision, and uh, and we we. We talked about that having um, Christian vision and having and a person with Christian character will be able to have the vision to look beyond the difficulty, beyond the problem, beyond the here and now, um, and look instead of into this worldly perspective of me and my needs and my problems and my selfishness to be able to look eternally beyond that. Good morning, Betty, and good morning, Andy. Good to, good to have you guys here this morning. And so I want to continue with that. And just to kind of uh, kick us off, let me tell you guys a little bit about something that happened to me. It's funny how the little things that happen in life, sometimes um, God will really speak, at least for me, he speaks to me. And I try to go uh, for a walk almost every day. I, I, I've been slack about it since COVID, but I'm trying to get back onto it. And uh, so I've been trying to go for a walk recently and I go in my neighborhood and it, and that's my time really to um, to listen to Christian music and to, to just have conversation with God. Good morning, Ann. Good to see you this morning. And so uh, yesterday I was out walking in my neighborhood and uh, it was such a nice day and there were a lot of families, a lot of people out because it was a holiday. And at one point as I was walking, this mother and her two children uh, kind of came beside me and they were riding their bikes and I, I was walking and they were kind they kind of came up behind me and and then rode beside me for a little while it was a mom with an infant in the front and she had a little kid next to her on his little teeny bike which is why they were going slow enough for me to walk next to them and um 
This little kid was probably, I think my guess is he was going into kindergarten and I overheard the conversation that they were having. And it was clear to me that this little boy was uh, worried about starting school today and worried and, up and not happy that he was starting to school and it was gonna be virtual. And so mom was trying to comfort this little boy. And so she, was, she kept saying things to him like, oh, you're gonna have so much fun. And he said, but I wanna be with my friends. And she said, but you're gonna really like it. And just think about, all the things that you're going to learn about computers and you're going to you get a chance to learn in a way that most kids don't get to learn this is a new thing and it's something different that's happening and uh there will come a day when you can be in school but for right now this is how we're going to do it and so she was saying you know you're going to learn so much about computers and that's going to be fun and she said and you know mom and dad we get to go to school with you when you're at home and you're on the computer because we don't get to do that when you really go to the off to the school so it's going to be a, a good thing and every time he had a complaint mom had something positive and she said, you just have to trust that something good is going to come out of this. You have to trust that this is something new that you're going to learn and something exciting that you're going to experience. And, and the son just wasn't listening. And just as they were riding past me, all of a sudden I heard the mom go, you know what? You just have to trust that God has something to do in this, that God is going to bless you in this. And it's going to be great because God loves you and God wants to bless you. And that's kind of the last thing I heard as they were riding off. And I was like, wow. That is exactly what we're talking about with Christian vision. Hey, Rosalie, good morning. That's exactly what we're talking about with Christian vision. And that's exactly what we're talking about of having the character of Christ in you to give you the ability to look beyond your problem and to look up and look for God in your problem and look for the, you know, for God working around you even when you don't see it in your own life. That's what we talked about on, uh, on Thursday. And today I wanna talk about exactly what that mom was talking about, looking a little bit deeper and asking, what is God doing in the midst of this? What God, might God be offering me or trying to teach me? How might God be developing my character on a different, deeper level that I just don't see? Uh, Andy says, I asked the question this morning, where and how do you see God's power? And Andy says, I saw God's power in how he can control the weather. One day it was hot and humid, but the next day was cool. It, it was a cool day. Our AC is down upstairs, so it was a blessing on those cool nights when we were able to get a good night's rest. Yes, you know, our AC is out in the sanctuary at church, and we had a soft opening again on Sunday. And the first time we did that, it was stifling in there. It was awful. And th this this week, it wasn't as bad. It was still hot. It wasn't as bad. We were hoping to have that fixed by next week. But thanks for sharing that, Andy. God is working. And we can see him if we just look for him. That's having vision and looking beyond the, looking beyond the problem of your AC, Andy, and seeing that, you know, God is working because he gave us a little bit cooler day and, uh, and just trusting that he's got something going. And that's what that mom was doing. And so I want to share with you once again the scripture that we talked about on Thursday. Let's go back to it for just a minute. This is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. Hear these words. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. I think those are just great words for us when you talk about vision, and that's exactly um, what we've been talking about, is being able to look beyond your problem and look for God, being able to be, look beyond your problem and see eternally. And uh, we talked about the, the guys in the jail cell that one of them looked at the window and all he saw was bars and saw his confinement. The other guy looked at the window and saw beyond that, he saw the sky, the blue sky and the stars, and that gave him hope and helped him to know that there was something bigger than that. I wanna take that uh, uh, one step farther. So we look beyond uh, and, and see beyond the here and now of our own problem. We look above and we see the power of God. I wanna challenge us this morning, just kind of like that mom said, to look deeper and look deeper into what we're going through and ask the question, what in the world might God be doing right now to, um, to develop something in me, to develop my character, to take me into a deeper relationship with him, to give me opportunities to to maybe be in ministry to people around me um, and to maybe uh, see something that I wouldn't see. What might God be doing in me or what might be God be doing in the situation with other people that I might not even be able to see? Let me share with you an example um, 
when I was in seminary, the dean of students would, uh, at Asbury Seminary when I was there, um, he went on a mission trip one summer for three months and he was gonna be in India for three months. And, and he shared at the end of that experience, this is one of the most, it's funny, you, you, you spend so much time in class and so much time in books, but I, he, he sent this in an email at the end of the summer one time and this was one of the most powerful lessons I learned in seminary. He shared that when he left to go on that mission trip, he discovered that he was gonna be partnered on that mission trip with a female um, pastor, uh, a, a female uh, educator that he had worked with in the past and they did not see eye to eye. They did not get along very well and they were not necessarily enemies, but definitely not on the same page. And so he shared that he instantly, when he found out she was gonna be partnered with him, he had a negative attitude about the trip. All of a sudden he didn't wanna go and, and he, he started complaining to God and basically saying, why in the world would you put me with this person? It's gonna be constant conflict. It's gonna be so distracting. How am I gonna be in ministry to people um, um, when I'm gonna be constantly butting heads with this woman. He said that we do not get along. Why would you put us together? And he said in the midst of that prayer, in the midst of that, he said it took him a couple weeks to stop whining about that and complaining to God. And in the midst of that, he kind of had this revelation that maybe God was doing something deeper. And so his prayer changed. And instead of being, why did you do this? And complaining to God, he started asking God, reveal to me what you're trying to teach me in this environment and in this relationship and in this situation and in the potential conflict. Please reveal to me what you're trying to teach me and what you have for me and what, what the purpose is in this. And he said, it ended up being this profound, amazing experience of this mission trip. And he and this woman actually ended up working really well together and, and they, they stretched each other because they didn't always see eye to eye. And he said it really deepened his trust in the Lord and helped him to recognize that even in times of adversity and even in times of problems, God is always, always working. And, uh, and he said, you know, he's, he was in his 60s. He said at his age um, and all his experience and all his, his teaching, that was something that God really taught him. And I just thought that was really great. And so I want to challenge us that part of having Christian vision, part of having the character of Christ is the ability to see not only beyond your problems and see up above your problems and see the power of God, but to look within your problems and look deeper and recognize that God is doing something deeper in you and deeper maybe in the people around you that you can't even see. The last thing I want to uh, offer to us is that, when, and before we finish up with vision, is that uh, part of having Christian vision is the ability to see solutions instead of problems. You know, so oftentimes when we have problems in our lives, we just get caught up um, in, in trying to get someone to fix our problems. And, and probably the worst thing that we can ever do for another person is to constantly fix their problems. You know, they talk about helicopter parents who are always solving the problems for their kids and then their kids never learn to solve problems for themselves. We need to be people who look for solutions instead of instead of look always thinking about um, and not excuses and not say, I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned in ministry as a pastor, particularly working with people who are, um, who are struggling, deep financial struggles or, or homeless, or they, they feel like they're in a hopeless situation. What I find a lot of times is when I'm counseling people and I'm listening to what they're telling me, what they're telling me so many times is I can't, I can't. And every potential solution that I offer, it's I can't, I can't, or here's an excuse why that won't work. And my feeling is I've come to realize that if a person can never offer anything but excuses, that kind of means they don't want to solve their problem. We have to look for solutions. There are solutions to every problem. Some of them are very difficult. Um, it might not be easy. It might may, mean making very hard choices in our lives, but there are solutions. God um, always offers us, uh, you know, they talk about where God shuts a door, he always opens a window. There is always something different. There is always something to help us solve our problems. So we have to be people who look for solutions instead of excuses. We need to be people who help others uh, learn how to fish instead of just fishing for them. Um, you know, that whole idea, if you, if you, if you, uh, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. We need to be looking for solutions, looking for uh, ways to help solve the big problem instead of just the momentary struggle. Um, and so I wanna offer to you that, that the way you start looking for solutions and um, is a really great strategy for looking for solutions is to stop for a minute and imagine yourself in a situation where your problem was gone. So for example, uh, you know, if, you've, if you're having financial troubles, 
imagine uh, yourself, I wake up tomorrow and I don't have any financial problems anymore. And so then stop and say, okay, what would that look like? Well, it would look like I had a steady job and a steady income. It would look like I had some money in the bank. It would look like I didn't have debt anymore. And so then stop and say, okay, what is something I can do today to start moving me in that direction and making things happen? And maybe uh, the thing that you can do today is I'm gonna start uh, putting aside $50 a month to pay down some of my debt or $100 a month or whatever, or I'm gonna start Start, um, putting out you know five applications a day to try to find that job and you know start taking steps you can't solve the whole problem in a moment but maybe you can take one step or two steps a day to start moving forward to start moving yourself toward that image of the solved problem that you see you've got to start somewhere and that starts with looking for solutions instead of looking for problems um, it's not easy. Sometimes it's very difficult. Um, and, and a lot of times I would, uh, I, I, I want to challenge you that, you know, if you can't start seeing solutions and you can't start feeling like there is a potential for solving your problem, let me share with you a passage of scripture that our Bishop, um, uh, really loves and shares with us a lot, Bishop Lewis. And, uh, she, this is, she said her favorite passage of scripture is in James one verse five. Listen to these words. If any of you lacks wisdom, he or she should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. If you lack wisdom, if you lack the ability to see solutions and to see behind your, beyond your problems, ask God for that wisdom. God wants you to see things from his perspective. He wants to develop your character, so he will help you um, catch that vision and see beyond and see the future. Let me see what Andy said here. He said, when my dad was ill from COVID and was imminent, I trusted God's plan to either keep my father on earth a little bit longer and to take him into paradise or to take him into paradise. God eventually took him home to heaven. Yeah, and you know what, Andy, that's a perfect example of, you know, it is easy to get overwhelmed um, with our own grief and our own sense of loss instead of trusting that, you know, the, the um, and we've talked about this, Andy, when, um, when that first happened with your dad, you know, the, the, the gateway to eternity and to being in the eternal presence of God is physical human death. And that's so hard for us to accept. And so to just trust that God's going to do what's best and God loves your dad and loves our loved ones more than we do. And just trust that God is, is going to move forward and God's going to do what's best for all of us. And that even if that doesn't feel right to us or that that's that brings a loss to us that we have to trust that god's in god's infinite love he's doing the best thing that thing for us and um and we might not be able to see that on this side of eternity sometimes we have to get to the other side of our own doorway to eternity to really see that so thanks for sharing that andy that's a really really great example i still think about your dad all the time um, you know, that was a struggle and, and one of those situations where you pray and pray and then you trust that God is doing what's best. Um, hard. That's a hard thing sometimes. But uh, let me just close out this morning and just remind us, you guys, that every day is, is filled with challenges and, and problems. And, um, you know, each time that you draw on the power and the presence of God, and that's why I asked you where you've seen that, each time that you look for and you draw on the power and the presence of God to help you get beyond and see beyond and see deeper um, and to see God's presence and power in the midst of your struggles. Each time that you do that, that builds your faith and that builds your character and that builds your trust and that builds your witness in the world. Um, it's, it's a very important thing to catch that vision. Let me just remind you of that passage again. Fix your eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen. For this, what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. Eternal. May all of us not have this closed vision of only ourselves and what's right in front of us. May we all have the character and the eyes of Christ to look up and to see what's eternal, no matter what's right smack in front of us. May we see stars instead of bars. Let's pray together. Holy God, thank you so much for the reminder that you are bigger than whatever problems that we're, we're, we, we face today and whatever we see right in front of us, that you are bigger and you are deeper. Help us to trust in you. Help us to have your eyes and your vision to see from an eternal perspective and not our limited human and sometimes very selfish perspective. Thank you for that reminder, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Guys, what should we pray for this morning? I would like to ask that we pray for all the students and parents and teachers and everybody that's gone back to school today. I know I, um, it is a very confusing time and it is a very uncertain time for all of those people and it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be very, very different. But I, I, like this mom said, trust that God's got a blessing for all of those who are gonna be involved in that, that something as great is gonna come out of that and they're gonna all grow as they work together. And it may just be growing relationships in a different way. So let's let's pray for for all of those involved in the school system and in in, in, in the education today at start schooling today. So let's pray. Holy God, thank you so much for all of those who are willing to let their kids go to school even virtually. All of those who would who have answered your call to be educators and teachers and administrators and all of those who have worked so hard behind the scenes to come up with a plan. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you would work out all the glitches, that things would run smoothly, that people would be able to find comfort um, and, and a comfortable way to learn and to teach and to trust one another. We ask for patience for everybody. We ask that you would work out all the difficulties and all the problems. Father, would you encourage all the students and encourage all the teachers who feel like they're not good enough or this is too hard or this is on this is different I encourage them all Lord uh, encourage the parents who are trying to juggle um, teaching and and also working Lord, we ask that you would find a way for our, our students to be back in the schools, keep them safe, provide a safe way that they can come back into the schools and be together. Lord, we trust that you are at work and we trust that you have all the right answers. Help us to work together to, uh, to, to find those answers and to work with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What else, you guys? What else do we need to pray for this morning? Anything? Uh, we have a few people at church that we, 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 uh, we did have a service on Sunday. You guys, it went great. We did communion. It was very different, but I think it went great. And we are now open for, uh, you know, for the foreseeable future. We're going to be open every Sunday at 11. We'll still do a live stream at 10. Uh, I'll give you the sermon or at least a, a part of the sermon, a, you know, a, a version of the sermon. And then, um, we will be open for worship. So it, those of you that aren't worshiping and your churches are not open, I'm not trying to steal you away, but you are more than welcome to come and to join us if you want to, um, you know, we are all part of the kingdom of God and brothers and sisters in that. So I hope you'll join us. Um, anything, I don't see any other prayer requests. If there are no more, uh, I will just pray us out and then we'll go on with our day. So let's pray. Holy God, thanks again for joining us here together, for drawing us here together. Thanks for the reminder in your word to have vision and to, and we just ask that you would continue to develop our character, continue to mold us into your image, Lord. Father, take us out into the world today and use us in any way that you would. We ask once again, Lord, for peace and reconciliation in our country. We ask for a cure for COVID-19. We ask that you would watch over and protect all of our brothers and sisters and our friends and our neighbors across the world who are vulnerable to this disease. Lord, we just ask that you would protect them. Father, we just give you this day. Use us and move us in any way that you would. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys have a great day and I will see you on Thursday at 10. God bless you. Thanks for joining me, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Love you.